Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to my what is credit and how to build it video tips from a rogue bitch. I'm by no means a financial advisor. These are just tips that I picked up and that I try to adhere to to keep my credit score good. My parents are so a little background on me. One of my parents their side of the family owned a business and they lost the business and there was no base my family has no claim to that business anymore so after that my family was poor I would categorize myself and my family as being generationally poor that means at least two generations have lived in poverty and they lack the necessary skills and knowledge to improve their situation Growing up and seeing my parents struggle with making poor financial decisions made me realize that I never want to be in that situation. So I personally do everything I can to make sure that I am fiscally responsible. Why is credit important? Credit is important because having good credit will make you eligible for better rates on loans, mortgages, and credit cards with better rewards on them. Even if you can pay for any of these things up front, credit cards allow you to earn cash back, miles, you can earn gift cards that you can redeem so you're earning money on money that you already will be spending anyway. Credit cards also offer money back or money off any streaming services that you use. If you are paying for your cell phone bill on a credit card, they most of them will offer some type of extra extended insurance or warranty. Obviously for these, what rewards you have to like read the credit cards, the contract to see what they offer. Buyer protection is a very good reason to have a credit card. If you order something online and it gets lost in the mail, the bank will push the seller to res come to a resolution. The reason the bank will be more willing to help you is because that's their money, not yours. So if you can't come to a resolution that you're happy with, you can issue a chargeback and get your money back essentially. I don't take advantage of this. Um, I personally would not issue a chargeback for something under $50 because you also it's bad to the banks if you do this too frequently. So if you do have a frequent packet problem with your packages being stolen, which I do, I usually, I just send them to my boyfriend's house. But if you don't have an option like that, you might need to get a PO box. But it does look bad if you're constantly going to the bank for a chargeback. How your credit score is generated. Your credit score is a way to let lenders know how responsible you are with paying back money that you are loaned. There are two systems for this. FICO and Vantage score. Different lenders will report information on you to these three accrediting agencies, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax at different times. So the data might be a little different when you're looking at it, but generally you should be within the same range for your score. FICO versus Vantage score. FICO score, okay, so this I'm gonna basically read off my notes because it's more, this is like the more mathematical science stuff, not the more experienced stuff, which I memorized. FICO scores range from 300 to 850. You need at least one credit account that has been opened for six months to have a FICO score generated. Your score, your FICO score is based on how much money you owe 30%, new credit lines 10%, Length of your credit history is 15% credit mix, meaning different types of accounts. So credit cards, a lease, a student loans is 10%. And your payment history is 35%. Vantage score range is also 300 to 850. Vantage 4.0 is friendlier than Vantage 3.0 because it accounts for how your credit behaviors change. So previously, if you were not very good about making payments on time, and then you start making them on time, Vantage Score 4.0 will take that into account and your credit score will be better. Any collection under $250 gets ignored. 
And this is how Vantage Score generates your credit score. Payment history, 35%. Credit utilization, 30%. Average age of accounts, 15%. Credit mix, 10%. And inquiries, 10% how to build your credit <laughs> if you have low credit or no credit you probably will need a secured credit card it's probably the t first type of credit card you will be approved for that means you will have to put up a small lump of sum as collateral and once you have made a few on-time payments and you show institutions like crediting institutions that you are capable of paying that money back on time it will be reissued to you check your free annual credit report at TransUnion and Equifax once a year. You can also download Credit Karma on your phone and track your score through there. Credit Karma is a rough estimate of what your score is. It's not always entirely accurate, but it should give you a good snapshot of each month. You can see how you are progressing in terms of paying on time, your utilization, and stuff like that. Treat your credit card as if it was a debit card. Do not buy stuff that you cannot afford, guys. It's all on the card. <laughs> they gave a credit card to a rat? It's platinum. Even I can't get a platinum card. Do you know how a credit card works? Obviously. Corey! When you use a credit card, oh sure, you can buy stuff with it now, but someone has to pay for it later! Who's that gonna be? It's gonna be you. Me? I can't afford all this stuff! Nah, now you get it! You don't need the latest phone, okay? I know this sounds hypocritical because I have an iPhone 11, but I literally, I had that phone. I had my previous phone for over 28 months. Actually, I did the math, okay? So I owned the Samsung Galaxy S7 for 858 days. I bought it for seven, it was $700, and then it was New York State tax is $56, roughly. So if you bring the, t so in total, that was $756 for that phone. So $756 divided by 858 days. That means I paid 88 cents for each day I had the phone until it died. If you can't afford to buy something twice, you can't afford it, all right? Listen to Jay-Z. This philosophy doesn't only apply to big purchases you also want to be mindful of the small purchases that you're making. Small Amazon shopping trips can add up quickly. And before you know, at the end of the month, you're like, where the hell did my money go? What did I spend it on? And then probably if you look over the stuff you bought, you, you didn't really need it. <laughs> Do not apply for too many credit cards at once. This is considered shopping around and to lenders, it will look like you just want free money and you don't care like where you get it from. The only exception to this I have read is mortgage payments, but don't take my word for it because I, I don't have a mortgage, so I don't actually know, but I've been told that for mortgage payment, it is different from applying for a credit card. Applying for a credit card will, or any type of loan, it, the banks will do a hard to pull, which will knock a few points off of your credit score, but it usually will bounce back up. Just something to keep in mind if you are going to be taking out another line of credit. Some institutions will run both TransUnion and Equifax. Again, do your research on the bank to see what crediting agency they will run your information against and to see how that will negatively affect you. Being a line of credit will also lower the average age of your accounts. I don't think that is the worst thing, but it is something to keep in mind. You want to keep your utilization at 30% max, any more than that. And when they look at your credit report, they're going to think that you're overextending and it's going to make them question whether you can pay back the money that they loan you. You should also be asking for a credit increase every six months or so. Some 
agencies will do a soft pull, which should have no bearing on your credit report, but some of them will do a hard pull. I believe some banks also, they may give you a number and tell you like, okay, we can do this, but if you want to be higher, then you probably have to authorize them to do a hard pull. Research your bank and see what their protocol is when it comes to doing a extension of credit. Pay your bill in full and on time each month. When you hear about people that are in like crazy credit card debt, it is not all from just spending money and living lavishly. Interest and late fees will rack up before you know it and they will bury you. Just give you an example. If you make a, so, okay, so APR, they do account for the daily balances in your uh, uh, balance. So if you are still spending it, the number will go up. But for the sake of just, I'm trying to simplify so you guys can understand how much money you can rack up in interest and fees. We're going to pretend that the amount is staying the same. If you make a purchase of $1,000 and you have an APR of 24%, it gets broken down to 2% per month. Only the minimum payment, which is generally, it's $25, you will also accrue $19.50 in interest. And then if you're not paying on time, there's another, the most late fees are like $35. So you just, if you're not paying in full on time, you can see where people start racking up insane numbers of debt. Uh, banks have an auto pay system. I personally, I am way too anal for that. I don't trust the payment to process. So I will log in by myself and pay it. But, you know, ask to remind you, get a planner, find a system that works for you and tracking your finances. This is what I, what I spoke about earlier about having like better credit cards. So once I had got my credit score up and I was able to prove to banks that I was responsible and capable of paying money back. I applied for the Freedom and then the Freedom Unlimited card. Unlimited is 1.5 cash back on everything. I would say I spend probably about $400 a month on groceries. On my grocery bill, I would get about $6 back. And then the Freedom, they have like a rotating category. So right now it's Whole Foods. So if I shopped at Whole Foods, I would it's 5% cash back. I would get $20 back on that. They now introduced the Freedom Flex, which I think I'm going to apply for soon. It's 5% cash back on any grocery store that is not a Walmart or a Target. So on the Freedom Flex, that means if I'm spending $400 back, I would get $20 back. Do not buy things just so you can get cash back. My point is, if you're going to be spending this money anyway, for example, your daily life, groceries you might as well get money back on the money that you already have to spend personally what i do at the end of the year when it comes to my holiday shopping i do buy people's presents yes on credit but at the end of the year is when i finally see how much cash back i have left and i transfer it into my bank account and i will use the cash back that i have to pay off the christmas presents and then whatever's left i put into savings no work smarter not harder keep old accounts open so your credit score does not drop due to having closed accounts and having older accounts helps your average age of accounts stay it makes it higher so your score will be better you can put a simple reoccurring charge in netflix and put on auto pay you can also you know if you're at the drugstore buy something you know whatever you're buying at the drugstore put on your credit card and just pay it off immediately so that you don't forget about it. Store credit cards are generally very bad because they have high APR. However, if you use them properly, they can be great. I have a Target credit card and I get 5% off of every purchase I make at Target. I looked at my savings from Target and it was like $50, but that's like $50 that I didn't have to spend. Pay your rent on time. Some management companies will report on time payments as a way to encourage their tenants to pay on time. Some companies charge extra for that. And personally, I don't think it, is, it would be worth it. I deal with a private landlord, so 
this is something that you have to decide for yourself if you think it is worth it or not. But in my opinion, no. Not only will an eviction lower your credit score, but it is going to make a landlord very, is going to make a landlord extremely unlikely to rent to you in the future. Most landlords will understand if you have student loan debt, even credit card debt. But if you have an eviction, that's a major red flag to a landlord because it based it because it's basically saying that you didn't pay the money for where you were living at the time the last thing i wanted to say is if you are a parent consider adding your child as an authorized user to your account when the card comes in mail shred it up and it will help your child in the future when like they're going to college and they need to take out student loans they will already have um 10 plus years of a credit history so it will help them a lot alternatively if you are a child or somebody has added you to their account as an authorized user and they have bad credit um you can call the banks and you can ask them to remove you from the account so that their if they have poor credit it will not drag your credit down with them so that's it guys the, these are the mo that's how your credit is made and that is how you can build it or at least that's how i personally built my credit again i am not a financial advisor this is just stuff that i have done and it has worked for me pretty well so far my credit's pretty good for my age so i think i know what i'm talking about and currently i'm debt free so 